Right, we are learning that Jammu and Kashmir's former Chief Minister Omar Abdullah has tweeted saying that amidst the day when three soldiers sacrifice their lives in Kashmir's line of duty, we are presented with this flattering article by the newest addition to the rank of partisan media. Surprisingly, all the infrastructure projects they have showcased here were initiated before 2019. The roads and tunnels owe their beginning to Dr. Manmohan Singh, just as the Chenab Railway Bridge. The conception and inauguration of the Gulmarg Gondola occurred during Dr. Farooq Abdullah's tenure as the Chief Minister. So, Omar Abdullah clearly training his guns at the centre, taking a jab. Remember, he's been one of those most vocal voices when it comes to uh, Article 370, the abrogation of Article 370, and he's in fact used it uh, as a unifying voice for the opposition. He's also gone on to, in fact, in the past, uh, attack the opposition's unity, saying that uh, none of the other parties, primarily the Ahmadi Party, uh, have in fact ever voiced support uh, in, in, in this cause that he's fighting against the abrogation of Article 370. For more details, let's quickly go across to Tijinder, who's joining me on the phone line. Tijinder, uh, do contextualize this tweet for us when he's talking about these crucial infrastructural developments that were done uh, by the Manmohan Singh government. He's also referring to his own father. Uh, what is the point that Omar Abdullah is trying to make through his tweet? Uh, uh, see, uh, see, ever since Article 370 has been abrogated, uh, there has been several developmental projects that have been launched in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir by the central government. Prior to uh, the abrogation of Article 370, there were several projects which could not be launched in the in, uh, uh, in the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir because Article 370 uh, played an impediment. But now that 370 has been abrogated, these political parties, be it the PDP or the National Conference, they have been trying to take credit of all the development that is taking place. Uh, though Omar Abdullah is saying that all those developmental projects which are being showcased by the current Modi-led government, by the Jammu and Kashmir administration, he is actually saying that these projects were launched uh, during his tenure or the tenure of his father. But uh, the ground reality is that even though some of those projects were launched earlier, even by Dr. Manmohan Singh, but uh, the, 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 the construction pace, the, uh, the, the pace of development took place after 2019 when there was no dearth of funds, Earlier, uh, because of the impediments, uh, because of the Article 370, the funds uh, which were allocated, they were not properly utilized. There was no accountability. So these uh, projects kept on uh, lingering. They, they kept on, their dates kept on extending. But there are many such uh, new developmental projects which have been launched after Article 370 was revoked. You see, now we have uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, you have two IITs, you have two IIMs, right. both in Jammu as well as in right. Kashmir, you have central universities. Uh, you have aims now, yes. So, you're rightly pointing out, you know, while that is one end of the spectrum, what Amur, uh, Omar Abdullah has to say, but the fact of the matter remains that the BJP government has been very vocal in voicing how, uh, the, you know, they've done away uh, with unjust laws. They've also brought in equity and fairness to those discriminated since ages, which is not now happening because Article 370 has been abrogated. There's, they've also ensured that there's greater empowerment of people when we talk about also relocating uh, those displaced. That's also something that the centre has been able to achieve. It's important to also highlight what the central government has been able to achieve via the abrogation of Article 370. Uh, see, I I'll give you an example of the West Pakistani refugees. These are the people uh, who migrated from Pakistan. They have been living in, the, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. For past 70 years, they were able to elect their member parliament, they were able to vote in the general election, but the, they had no right to vote for their MLA, they had no right to vote for their, even their councillors or to elect a panchayat member because of Article 370. The Valmikis who have been living in Jammu and Kashmir for generations, their rights, they were discriminated. Even the women folk in Jammu and Kashmir who married outside the state, they were discriminated upon. Their rights uh, were, were taken away if they uh, happened to marry somebody who had no state subject. So now these uh, discrimination is a thing of uh, past. 
Right. You see, uh, when you say what the central government has achieved, uh, there has been a remarkable around 80% decline in the number of terror incidents. There has been remarkable decline in the number of uh, casualties mm. suffered by security mm. forces. Even the civilian casualties mm. in terror attacks have come down. In so fact, this, if we the, talk the, the about it politically point. also, Tejinder, uh, when we talk about opposition as a whole itself, we've also heard Omar Abdullah, you know, come out in the open and attack the opposition when it comes to uh, the whole issue of opposition unity has been very vocal saying that uh, what are we talking about op opposition unity when nobody in fact he's clearly trained his guns at our Madhvi party and Arvind Kejriwal in the past as well saying that why should we uh, support them when when they did not support us when it came to the issue of abrogation uh, of article 370 so uh, take us also through how this has impacted uh, this entire topic has impacted uh, opposition unity as a whole uh, see, we all know that Umar Abdullah had attacked the opposition even when uh, the, uh, the, the, the daily uh, uh, issue came out. Umar Abdullah said that it was Arvind Kejriwal who did not support uh, the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, the, uh, the, the Umar Abdullah, he did not support uh, their stand when Article 370 was abrogated. So now why, they are take, uh, why do they want support uh, from uh, when, uh, when, when the, uh, the, the ordinance of, uh, for daily powers it, it came up and uh, Arvind Kejriwal wanted all the opposition parties to oppose it. Umar Abdullah has been quite vocal, but it seems that uh, they have some compulsion to join hand with uh, with all the political parties because they want to make a joint front uh, to fight uh, the NDA government led right. by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So this seems to be a compulsion. But on ground in Jammu and Kashmir, the reality seems to be entirely different. And these political parties, uh, especially the Kashmir-based political parties, they seem to have lost their uh, touch with the people across uh, Jammu and Kashmir. You see, uh, these political parties are in a confusion because they have to speak one voice in Kashmir Valley and when they come and address the people in Jammu, they have right. to speak a different voice because uh, people across the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, they have very well accepted the fact that Article 370 is a gone topic now. Uh, what they have to discuss, they have to discuss how to end terrorism, how to ensure that uh, the people in Jammu and Kashmir, they uh, see development that is taking place. Uh, the people in Jammu and Kashmir, they want their uh, children to get good, good education. They want their children to get good employment as uh, the people right. across the country are getting. So this is something which uh, the political parties in Jammu and Kashmir, especially the PDP, the National Conference, they have to come to uh, terms with this reality now. Yes. Absolutely. Quite a landmark day as far as the fourth anniversary of the abrogation of Article 370 is concerned. Many thanks to you, Tejinder Singh Sodi, for bringing in all those inputs. On that note, let me also bring you all uh, the ground reports that CNN News 18 is covering so far. How has uh, the abrogation of Article 370 impacted day-to-day -day life in Jammu and Kashmir? Let's have a quick look. BJP is today celebrating fourth anniversary of abrogation of Article 370. Behind me uh, is uh, the function where BJP uh, workers, along with leadership, has gathered. Uh, they are talking about the success of BJP uh, after 370 abrogation, including holding of G20, development, smart city, and other benefits uh, that they say have been given to Kashmir Valley uh, in all these years after the abrogation of Article 370. Most of them have been critical of the PDP National Conference and the governments which have actually ruled Jammu and Kashmir during all these years. Uh, remember today, while the BJP is talking about development, a PDP National Conference and Sajjad Loan led People's Conference has lashed out uh, at uh, the government uh, saying that uh, PC said that uh, this is a black day. Uh, while uh, the BJP has been saying that it was a historic day and uh, National Conference and PDP both saying that their offices have been locked by the government, PDP actually tried to uh, seek a request from the government uh, for a convention of like-minded parties in Srinagar, but they said later on yesterday that they were not allowed uh, and the permission was not given while at the same time criticizing the government for allowing the BJP for holding this convention.